Hi guys, welcome to Pointy Not Sharp. Today we're taking a look at a Swiss Dosh Bayonet M1918, model 1918, or Dagger Bayonet model 1918. This bayonet was designed to fit the model of 1911 Swiss carbine. Uh, it also fits the model of 1931 short rifle, uh, or K31 as most of us know it. I've been told it will also fit the Schmidt Rubin 1889 if you have one of those, so give it a try. Anyway, this bayonet was made by two manufacturers. It was made by uh, Waffenfabrik uh, in Newhausen uh, from 1918 through to 1933. It was also made by uh, Elschner Schweiss, uh, which is Victorinox. And they made it from 1918 through to the early 20s when production ceased. But they started making them again in uh, 1934 and continued production all the way until 58. Uh, looks like the uh, scabbard was made by Piat. And um, the frogs, if you're familiar with Swiss frogs, they're made by uh, a range of Swiss saddlers. There's no shortage of uh, saddlers in Switzerland making uh, bayonet frogs. If you're familiar with the um, STG 57 bayonet, um, the frogs here, I've found 65 different manufacturers for the frogs. And from what I can tell, it's very similar with the 1918, 1914, and Schmidt Rubin bayonets. So it appears to be a, a common trend with Swiss bayonets. So this bayonet was designed to replace the Schmidt Rubin 1889 and 1899 bayonets. Uh, it's the same length, but it has a different blade profile. So while the Schmidt Rubin has a single edge uh, with a deep squared fuller, this has a double edge, sort of more of a, uh, a dagger look to it. And while this is designated the uh, Dagger Bayonet Model 1918, the Schmidt Rubin was also called a Dagger Bayonet. So um, I don't think it's uh, the double double blade, which is the reason it's called Dagger. I think it's just the, the length of the knife. So actually having a look at the blade, we'll have a look now. So it's got a nice double-edged blade, razor sharp, no fuller. Same on both sides. It's got a very nasty uh, tip on it. Coming down to the cross guard, very solid cross guard, muzzle ring, and the guard here tapers off a little bit, I'm assuming for weight. Very solid handle, uh, wooden handle retained by rivets. Very solid pommel with a standard push button. Having a look at the scabbard and frog, I'll pull the scabbard out of the frog for this explanation. Just a standard steel frog, ball at the end, mouth, and a bar to retain uh, this strap for attaching to the frog. Back down. Now, markings on the bayonet and the frog. Got the manufacturer on the Ricasso, which is Elschner Schweiss. So in 1950, I believe, Elschner Schweiss also uh, put Victoria underneath their marking. So it'd read Elschner Schweiss Victoria, if this is an example made after 1950. And likewise, if this was a Waffenfabrik Neuhausen, that's what it would say right there on the Ricasso. So moving down to the cross guard, we have a quality inspection mark just here, which is a plus and an O, which is where you find all your quality inspection marks, uh, on Swiss bayonets anyway. Then we've got a serial number, and the serial number is actually paired with a rifle. So I've looked up this serial number. Uh, if you're curious, you can jump online and you can actually look up what uh, rifle and what year of manufacture matches the serial number on your bayonet. So I've looked this one up. It matches a model of nine, uh, 1911 carbine made in 1928. Now, if you remember, uh, Elsha Schweiss stopped production in the early 20s and started again in 1934. So 1928 was a period where they weren't manufacturing bayonets. So what I suspect is that they had a large number of these manufactured and um, it was sitting in storage and 1928, when the rifle was manufactured, a bayonet was paired with it. Either that or a rifle lost a bayonet and they uh, paired another one with it. I don't know. Be interesting to find out, but I don't think there is any way to learn. So there's no other markings on the bayonet at all. However, the scabbard does have three markings on it. 
So on the base of the ball here, there we go, we've got a little plus inspection mark. You can see that. And that's typically found on the balls of uh, most Swiss bayonets. Then on the mouth, if you remember this was manufactured by Piard, we have a cursive letter P. So when I compare that to, hang on, a model of 1957 bayonet, bear with me, I'm just pulling it out the frog so I can show you. The mouth on the 57 was also manufactured by Piard and it's got that same P. It's upside down, it is. There we go. Now with the STG 57, it's only the mouth of the frog that's made by Piet. And uh, well, I was told the entire scabbard was made by Piet. I was a little, um, a little curious if that was actually the case or if it was just the mouth. So after having a look on the actual frog, I did manage to find another P on the actual scabbard. So yeah, it does appear that Pierre made the actual scabbard as well. Another cursive P for you. If you're not familiar with Pierre, they're a company that have manufactured a huge number of things and they were around for 160 years or so, a very, very long time. They made everything from um, music boxes to uh, shaving kits, everything, you name it, they made it. Pretty interesting company. Yeah, what else have we got? The frog. So it's pretty standard markings on the frog. We've got our oval with the manufacturer's name at the top, year of manufacture in the middle, and place of manufacture in the bottom. And then we have a inspection uh, mark up here, which is a plus with a J. So it looks like this one was manufactured by H. Schuler in 1943. And I can't quite make out what that says underneath. It might come up better on the camera, but it's a bit hard to make out in real life. But yeah, that would be the place of manufacture and that would probably be a town or a city in Switzerland. Um, these were used until they were replaced by the um, STG-57. Uh, the STG-57 bayonet actually uh, retains the dagger profile of the blade, as you can see. So that must have been a uh, bit of a hit because they've retained it. It is a bit shorter. And uh, these were obviously used by Switzerland, but they were also used by the Vatican Swiss Guard in uh, very small numbers. So I believe in uh, 1955, about 100 of these were supplied to the Vatican Swiss Guard. And I believe they used them for some time. Um, the only thing left to really say is that uh, in 1955, there was a, uh, a slightly different variant of this bayonet made. Uh, I've been told it had a uh, heavier hilt. I don't know if that means more weight in the pommel, the handle, or the cross guard are all three. I haven't um, been shown a photo of what an example of that would look like. But if you come across one with a heavier hilt, that would be one of the uh, Model 1918-55s with uh, exactly that. Other than that, guys, if I've made any mistakes or missed anything, please feel free to let me know or comment down below. Thanks for watching.